Venetian limestone is uh, something really rather special. It's not any old limestone. Well, the field training program is really about trying to instill people who already work with the public uh, to pass on the knowledge that they're gaining from the days so that people will understand uh, and learn more about the limestone landscapes. So that could be around the, the rocks of the geodiversity, having a, a greater knowledge of the, uh, the magnesium limestone strata, uh, because it is a very complicated uh, set of rocks that we've got here. What has happened here is you've got underlying topography. Yeah. So you've got sand dunes and dune right. ridges right. originally. And then as the sea encroached, it covered up, it filled in the hollows. Mm. But if you had pronounced ridges, uh, it would have banked over it. Right. And that's what we've got there. And also looking at sort of things around biodiversity, such as bi butterflies and the flowers that you see on the magnesium limestone grasslands. And next to that, we've got wild rock rose. It has little woody stems and opposite leaves. And this is the plant that the, the rare northern brown argus butterfly depends on and it actually lays its eggs on the top surface of these leaves. So we've been exploring the, um, the hill at Penshaw Monument uh, in the morning and we're here in this lovely afternoon at Tunstall Hills and we're now exploring the unique reef behind us at Tunstall Hills um, with um, geology experts and we're also looking at the fascinating wildflowers that are growing on the rocks. And then we've got a beautiful wild rose here and with this white flower and it has um, lots of little spines on the stems. I, I think projects like this are really important because a lot of experts know that these sites are uh, extra special sites but I think a lot of the public perhaps don't realise just what they've got on their doorstep and I think if we can get people out, show them the unique geology and wildflowers in these areas, I think it raises awareness of these sites, how vulnerable they are, and gets people involved in helping to manage them and preserve them into the future. Any idea what this might be? Ladies bed straw. Ladies, ladies bed straw. <laughs> Maybe more little known is the historic environment, um, that uh, although we don't have a Stonehenge or a Hadrian's Wall, uh, we have a large number of uh, quality uh, historic environment places to go and look at and see uh, and it's using those those places um, and working with with those people to uh, develop a, a body of knowledge uh, to help people understand the the wonders that we've got here excitingly great thing about geology is you never know what you're going to find you turn over rocks and all of a sudden something like this turns up i don't know exactly what this is but it's got bony structure um, and there's what looks to be a sort of jawbone along there. Paul, our tutor, said that you often don't need to actually split the rocks open. Uh, if you just turn a rock over, you might find something interesting. At that second, I looked down, and there was this huge, great, conspicuous-looking item in the middle of a large piece of rock. Fantastic to think it's been there for 200 million years or more, and now we've, we've found it. Fascinating. <laughs>